My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to use Photoshop to clean up a storyboard. Now, storyboards are tremendously important, and they're used all the time in the world of video production, especially for broadcast spots, to plan out complicated scenes and give the client a good idea of what's to come. Fortunately, you can use Photoshop to clean up your rough sketches and make them look more polished. Here's how. So I've got here a simple sketch and you see the before and after. One of the things that really comes in handy is using a levels adjustment. Let's go ahead and make an initial selection of the image on the left. And what we'll do here is just mark here around it. You could then add an adjustment layer for levels. And what you want to do is really punch this. Now, if you have paper that's not pure white, take the white eyedropper and click on the paper and that will push it to a clean white. You could then pull the black slider in to take your lighter gray lines and really make those crisper. Notice as we drag in how they get thicker. Then if there's any little smudge that you don't want, drag the white slider in and some of that noise will go away. And that does a pretty good job of cleaning that up. Now, if you really want to refine that, sometimes you'll go as far as just blurring the layer first. So if we have that selected, we might just go ahead and toss on the Gaussian blur and run it at a low value of say two pixels to go ahead and get rid of some of the noise. Now you'll see that the adjustment layer does an even better job of tightening that up really cleanly. So really the secret here is gently blur, then toss on a levels adjustment to clean it up. Let's try this one more time. I've got another multi-panel here and we're just going to go after one of the individual layers. So I'll take my crop tool and I'm going to crop around this individual panel here. There we go. And I've got it selected. Let's make that a little bit bigger and we'll run that Gaussian blur. We'll do a value of one here this time just to clean it up a bit and add the levels adjustment layer eyedropper to select something that should be white like the paper and you see it gets much cleaner. Pull in the black slider to thicken your dark lines and pull in the white slider to clean up any noise you don't want. You could then refine it with a quick drag of the middle slider there to increase or decrease the thickness of the lines. That's working pretty well. Let's go ahead and clean this up the rest of the way. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer here and with the rounded rectangle tool selected, I could play with the radius setting here. Let's try a radius of about 25 pixels and we'll go ahead here and draw. There we go. Making a new layer and that worked pretty well. There it is. I'm just going to nudge that into place. That looks good. Command click to load it and choose select inverse. We could throw that away. And now we'll just fill that with a solid color. There we go. And we get a nice clean white for our edge. And if we need to, we can even toss on a stroke so we get an interior edge there. And I'll just put that to a nice, simple black stroke. There we go. We got a nice top frame. We'll name that frame. Now, since we want to colorize this, we need to switch to RGB color mode. And that's a piece of cake. There we go. We won't flatten the document. If necessary, you might have to tweak the levels a little bit to accommodate for the color mode change, but that's still working pretty well. On my new empty layer, I can go ahead and set that to color mode at the bottom of the list there. Grab my paintbrush and go over to swatches and pick out a color such as brown. Left bracket for a smaller brush. Make sure I'm using my paintbrush tool. And we've got the layer set to normal mode to start. We'll go ahead and paint on that and just paint in where the hair is going to go. There we go. That's working pretty well. And you don't have to worry that much about staying inside the lines because I'll show you a neat little trick here in a second. Go ahead and paint in the area you want. And this is a good place to use a tablet actually because you can go a little bit faster. And you just paint in. If you want to keep better control, I recommend isolating the colors to their own layers. 
but you don't have to be a neat freak here and completely stay inside the lines. One, because it's just a storyboard, and two, I'm going to teach you a good trick. So we'll leave this in normal mode, just finish painting that in. Let's make a new layer here, we'll call it skin. And we'll paint in her skin tones. Let's go with sort of a cream here. Grab our paintbrush and paint. I'm going to do just the face here, but obviously if you wanted to spend the time, you can go ahead and finish this out. You don't have to be too worried about staying in the lines because you're going to create a sandwich effect in just a moment. Once you get the initial color in there, that works pretty well. Let's go ahead and finish that out. We'll put the skin behind. That looks good. Grab the eraser tool and just clean up a little bit of the jaw. And what we'll do now is take a copy of the background layer. So, real cool trick here. Turn these layers off and simply say select all and choose edit, copy merged, and paste that on top. You'll then set that above your colored layers. And here's the dirty little trick. If you set that copy of the line art to multiply mode, all the whites will drop out and your strokes will cleanly go right on back top of the color. So the cool thing here is that you didn't have to stay inside the lines because you could simply put the lines back over the colors on top. Now, be sure to experiment, but this is a great way to quickly colorize and clean up your storyboard document. Much easier than pulling out the colored markers or pencils. For Photoshop for Video, my name's Rich Harrington, and be sure to check out our resource blog where you'll actually find a detailed article about storyboard techniques. Just visit our conferences section and take a look at the Photoshop World Conference where you'll find an in-depth article about using Photoshop as a storyboard tool.